We're here this week at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center in Washington, D.C. for the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation's 42nd Annual Legislative Conference. And the reason there's a CBC at all is because we fought and won the right to vote. Now, getting that right to vote was a hundred-year-long struggle that saw beatings, violence, and even deaths. And that fight for the right to vote isn't over. Half a century ago, blacks were prevented from voting by a variety of intimidating tactics, including literacy tests, poll taxes, dogs, police batons, and violence from angry white citizens. Today, the tactics are not as overt, and they involve lawyers, rich donors, the cutting of early voting hours, voter IDs, and other methods to suppress the vote. A new study out this month from researchers at the University of Chicago and Washington University in St. Louis projected that nearly 700,000 to 1 million minority voters under the age of 30 may be unable to cast a ballot in November because of voter ID laws in certain states. We're here today at the Emerging Leaders Town Hall, the evolution of politics and empowerment, and we're going to find out what some folks are doing to protect our vote and how you can get involved. Joining me are Lee Owens, politics editor for the Huffington Post, co-director of the Advancement Project, Judith Brown Dianis, Impact co-founder and director and executive director of the Congressional Black Caucus, Angela Rye, and Brandon Davis, national political director of the Service Employees International Union. Folks, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. All right, panel, before I ask you a question, here's what a state rep in Pennsylvania had to say. Uh, the latest outrage, if you will, voter ID. Remember before, they had the leader there who said Mitt Romney is going to win Pennsylvania because of voter ID. Check out what this guy, uh, Representative Metcalf, had to say. As, as Mitt Romney said, I mean, what, we have 40-some percent of the people that are living off the, the public dole, living off of their neighbor's hard work. And we have a lot of people out there that are too lazy to get off and what they, you know, to get up and get out there and, and, and get the ID they need. So, I mean, if individuals are too lazy, the state can't fix that. Now, he said they're lazy. In Pennsylvania, first of all, the courts this week sent it back down to the lower courts to say to measure the impact. What's interesting is Pennsylvania folks said they are they pursued voter ID because of voter fraud. Yet when they went to court, they actually told the court they have no evidence of voter fraud. They have no studies showing it. And uh, even if they got IDs, it would not impact voter fraud. Basically, their argument really has been a fraudulent one. So Advance the Project were counsel in that case in Pennsylvania, and there was no evidence of voter fraud, but there is evidence of voter suppression. That evidence is Terzai, who said it's for Mitt Romney. That evidence is that the state actually has no clue of how to get IDs in the hands of the people that don't have it. And we have to, you know, let's put this in a larger context. What has happened in terms of voter suppression is because we turned out in record numbers in 2008. Young people turned out in record numbers in 2008. Latinos turned out in record numbers. Two million more African Americans voted in 2008 right. compared to 2004. Black women voted at a higher rate than any other group in America right. in 2008. Right. And when you look at Pennsylvania, it really is a good um, story about this because, in fact, there, the state says 760,000 people that are registered voters don't have the ID. We know it's more than that. But the margin of victory for Obama in 2008 was 660. So you have 43% of people in Philly don't have voter ID to vote. And so we know what this is about. This is politicians trying to manipulate the laws so that they can win. Now, obviously, we are waiting for the final ruling in Pennsylvania. They kicked back the Texas law, said uh, it, it was simply a violation. But, all right, some places you do have uh, uh, voter IDs. And so what are organizations doing to say, look, here's what the law is in some places. The, the, let, let the lawyers fight other places. What's happening on the ground to make it possible to say, look, you still need to be able to register to vote? Well, this coming Tuesday, September 25th, is National Voter Registration Day. There are organizations all over the country, including IMPACT, who are joining together to make sure that folks are equipped, not only with their voter registration, if they've been purged from the rolls, to make sure they're re-registered and also have the requisite ID. At the end of the day, no, we shouldn't give up the fight. It is in litigation, but we need to be prepared. We need to prepare our communities. In addition to that, the Congressional Black Caucus members are going to be at their boards of election on Tuesday, getting folks from the community to come 
register to vote. Um, we also have a website for those that are electronically inclined, and that's getvoteready.org. Yeah, I, I, we've got a similar situation at SEIU. Our 2.1 million members made it very clear that we've got to figure out how to deal with this both in the immediate, which we're doing on the ground every day. We're communicating with voters. We've talked to over a million voters this year, our members on doors every day. Very quickly, Advance the Project, we also have been doing, we've been doing calls with radio DJs, personalities, DJs from clubs, barbershops, et cetera, because we need to make sure that they have the accurate information that they need to give to the people that they have credibility with in the community. And so we keep doing these educational right. pieces so that folks are ready to talk to people about voting. Have you been seeing in terms of your reporting, uh, grassroots folks saying, look, you know, we have a push, push, push and get people to know what papers you need, things along those lines as well. Absolutely. And I think a lot of what I've been seeing, you know, is that sort of last minute push to make sure everyone is prepared in November to cast that vote. Because, you know, obviously we know what it is. It's, it's voter suppression at its, at its best. And so. you know, the other point that I've been also making is on the show, on radio, other places is understand that your state is different than some other state. You have to know what you need in, in Ohio, in Pennsylvania, in Florida, in Texas, in Illinois, because it's different than other states. Right. And to that end, um, what we've also been doing, and um, Judy, Judy's group has also joined in with the Advancement Project, every single Tuesday um, from a few weeks ago until November 6th, we're doing Super Tuesday Twitter town halls. We tweet those facts, state-specific, on what you need to bring to the polls, on your Secretary of State's website, exactly the kind of information that you need. There are several websites out there um, that give you and equip you with the right tools. And it's important for people to understand that while there was an effort to pass these voter ID restriction laws in 33 states, there are only three new states that are requiring the, the really restrictive ID, which is Tennessee, Kansas, and then Pennsylvania, which has a question mark because we'll be back in right. court on Tuesday. All right, folks, hold tight one second when we come back.